Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. So, so welcome to this uh, new webinar of the uh, Corealis project. Today, we will talk about the 5G improving the port's operations efficiency. But let me first ask you, who are you? So I will launch a quick webinar, a quick uh, poll to see who you are. So the poll is now open. I see that there are already some participants voting. 38% voted, 52% voted. Let's wait some seconds more. 67%. I will close the poll in three seconds. And I close the poll. So, 17% of the audience is the port operator. 26% is research organization. 17% is a consultant. And 39% is other. Let's see later who are these others. So, Welcome to this uh, webinar, and here is the agenda for uh, today's webinar. And I will now introduce uh, the uh, project coordinator uh, for the communication and dissemination, Elena Kikidjiani, Scientific Project Manager at Sibility. Has more than six years of experience as project manager in several EU-funded projects, H2020, FP7, Erasmus Plus, or in national projects. She has significant uh, experience in environmental engineering, transport planning, security and risk assessment. Her research interests include sophisticated techniques of utilizing geographical information systems and remote sensing uh, techniques. Eleni holds a Master of Science degree in urban planning and regional development, a Master of Science degree in geoinformatics, and she is currently in process of obtaining her MBA from the National and Technical University of Athens. Elena, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Welcome also from my side to the Corealis Livorno Demo and Training Webinar. This is the Corealis Project Overview Presentation. Corealis is a European Commission project funding under the horizon 2020 within the topic of the port of the future. It lasts for 36 months from May 2018 to April 2021 and is coordinated from the Institute of Computers and Communication Systems. It consists of 17 partners from nine European and associate countries and among them there are four research institutes, five ports, four industry players, three SMEs and one ITS association. It has five living labs uh, in five European port cities, including three out of the top five in Europe, namely the Antwerp port in Belgium, the Piraeus port in Greece, the Valencia port in Spain, the Livorno port in Italy, and the Hamina Kotka port in Finland. Uh, what Corealis does, Corealis proposes a strategic innovative framework which is supported by disruptive technologies such as IoT data analytics, next generation traffic management and 5G networks. So to assist ports uh, to handle their upcoming and future capacity, optimize their operations, reduce their environmental footprint, increase their efficiency and at the same time minimize the traffic within and around the ports, and engage the sustainability of the socio-economic development of the port and its surrounding area. To do so, it comprises of a palette of port-driven technological and societal innovations, which are the Port of the Future Series Game, a simulation tool for decision-making, the Track Appointment System, which is a reservation system including real-time Elena? The voice, your voice is gone. Elena? For key port kinder on corridors. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you again. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, Elena. You can go on. Oh. 
Okay, uh, the Brokerage Platform, which is a cloud-based marketplace for leasing and exchanging intraport assets. The Cargo Flow Optimizer, which is an optimization tool for ocean rail inland waterway cargo flows. The Portmont, which is an optimization modeling tool for container, for container terminal operations. The Predictor for Asset Management, which is an optimization machine learning tool for efficient use of port assets. The Innovation Incubator, which is a scene that makes the port the epicenter of the local and industrial urban space. And finally, the Green Cook Book, which is a cost-benefit analysis and roadmap for reducing port's environmental footprint. Here, there is a matrix of Corealis demonstration versus innovations, where you can see in which of the five leading labs each innovation is implementing. Now I will give the floor to the moderator to showcase the official Corealis project video. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you all. So you saw look what the overview of the whole project. Today we focus on the Livorno and the 5G improving the, the port operations efficiency. And let me introduce new, now Dr. Silvia Ferrini from European Programs and Innovation at the Northern Tyrrhenian Sea uh, Sport um, Authority. Silvia, the port, the, uh, Silvia took a, a master degree in business informatics in 2013 at the University of Pisa. Having worked in many EU-funded projects, she won a research grant from the Scuola uh, Superiore Santana in 2016 for studying real-time ICT platforms. Until 2017, she had been a researcher in the Joint Lab for Advanced Sensors, monitoring and control systems jointly developed by the CNIT in cooperation with the North Iranian uh, Seaport System Authority. And presently, she is working as employee of the North Tyrian Seaport System Authority on the improvement of tools and services 
for the port and logistics communities. Silvia, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. I am here on behalf of the Northern Tyrrhenian Seaport System Authority. The Seaport System Authority is uh, composed of uh, the uh, Port of Livorno, the Port of Piombino, and the smaller ports of Elba and Capraia Highland. And the Port of Livorno is uh, the first rural port in Italy. It is uh, one of the main multiple post ports in the Mediterranean. I mean that uh, it has uh, spaces, infrastructure, facilities, uh, equipment to handle any type of cargo and to receive any type of vessel. This is the reason why we have decided to identify the Port of Livorno and to focus all the living labs on this. The Port Authority considers the digital infrastructure as important as the physical infrastructure. This is the reason why we have decided to adopt a digital agenda focuses on four different pillars, innovation, digitalization, decarbonization, and the sustainability of the port. This digital agenda is based on the adoption of standards, the uh, adoption of the open data approach, and uh, one, let me say that one of the main digital key of this digital agenda is uh, Monica, that stands for Monitoring and Control Standard Platform. Monica is used to uh, gather information coming from different external sources, such as uh, sensor, intelligent devices, uh, and other application. It uh, integrates all of this information and it, pro it provides to the port and logistic communities the uh, value added services. In relation to the research and innovation part of the digital agenda, um, I can say that uh, since 2015, the Port Authority signed an agreement with the CNIT, the National Interuniversity Consortium of Telecommunication, in order to implement a joint laboratory. This joint laboratory aims at uh, uh, testing uh, disruptive and cutting edge technologies. It aims at uh, adopting standards and it aims at uh, uh, providing to the port communities a new uh, ICT innovation. In relation to the Corealis project, we can say that uh, this project is helping us to implement our digital agenda because it provides us a new um, innovation, new, new solutions, new uh, tools, new simulation and evaluation um, methods uh, tools to uh, evaluate the uh, impacts of innovation in a mid-long term. I would like to provide you a general overview of our living labs that will be deployed later. The first one is the RT port, the real-time control module, and uh, it is used to um, identify new solutions to uh, optimize the handle of general cargo within port area by introducing and testing new technologies such as the 5G technology. The second one is the port mode, the port modeling and cargo data flows, and it is used to share and provide to terminal operators new simulation models in order to optimize the movement of cargo and equipment within port area. And the last one is the port of the future series game. It is very useful for us in order to evaluate the impact of innovation in terms of efficiency, competitiveness, sustainability, and security and safety of the port. All of these living labs are implementing by adopting a bottom-up approach because we think that only with a meaningful dialogue we can really build the port of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Silvia. Just you. a reminder for the, the audience, because look, uh, some people joined look, in the meantime, all uh, slides will be made available look, uh, through the project website uh, and the Q&A. Uh, you for uh, asking questions, use the question box so that we can look, also attribute the different questions to the, the speakers. And 
anyway, there will be the Q&A look at the end of the webinar. Now, let me introduce you to the 5G uh, speakers. So we have two uh, persons. We have Anna Sessler and Teresa Pepe. So uh, Anna holds, look, uh, is, Anna is a customer project manager on innovation from Ericsson Telecommunication in Italy. She holds a Master of Science in Economics from the University of Pax in Hungary, has a wide experience in the telecommunication industry, works since 2001 for Nokia Italia, H3G Italia, and Ericsson, Ericsson Telecommunication. She worked in the deployment of telecommunication networks and rollout and of innovation. Teresa Pepe, experienced researchers at Ericsson Telecommunication, received her degree in telecommunication engineering cum laude in September 2008 from the University of Pisa. In uh, November 2008, she won a grant funded by the MEUR for a PhD position in information engineering at the Department of Information Engineering of the University of Pisa, and in 2012, obtained her PhD, discussing a thesis on network security. She's actually an experienced researcher at Ericsson Research in Pisa. Her expertise mainly concerns IP networks, network function virtualization, architecture and control plane the solutions for packet optical networks, 4G, 5G mobile networks, and IoT and robotic applications. She has worked in several research projects funded by the Italian Ministry and the EU. Anna? Teresa, the floor is yours. Anna, you're still muted. Good, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. So my name is Anna Sessler, and together with my colleague, Teresa, we will present the 5G enabled IoT terminal operations. Our presentation will focus on these chapters in the agenda or project goals, the infrastructure that has been built to host the operations and use cases, the general cargo logistic use case, the description of its functionalities and their adoption in the logistic chain. An in-depth description about the main innovations developed to assist real-time port called RT port and real-time operations. And last but not least, the concept of Livorno Living Lab and the ongoing activities. In this section, we will let you see also some demo on enhanced logistic use cases. The Coralis overall objective is to adapt and introduce new technologies, tools and methods to increase the port capacity, efficiency and safety with a positive environmental and societal footprint. In the consortium of Coralis and of the ports, Livorno is one of the players. In Livorno, innovations related to 5G are going to be experimented. The objective is to realize operation for a real-time port, which means to realize a real-time control module for 5G smart terminal operations. The main elements of RT real-time port are a set of IoT devices, tablets, cameras, smart glasses, connected through the 5G network will enable new disruptive port logistic operations. A main control system developed by Ericsson will improve automation in cargo operations. This infrastructure will create a closed loop communication and the collaboration between the machines, which will increase efficiency in port operations. All this framework will convey to a sustainable port concept, the reduction of carbon footprint and improvement of environmental sustainability. This section will be detailed and described in the 5G impacts on port of Livorno Logistics, had by Rossella Cardone at the end of this webinar, so please stay in line. The focus of our study for innovation and improvement in the port had as reference the bar goods. The reason is that bar goods, compared to containerized general cargo, have very specific characteristics. In effect, we are talking about goods where there are no standard size, no standard weight, and no automation on handling. And where, where, where it's very difficult to optimize logistic operation for loading, unloading, and optimize the storage capability. Um, so here is descriptive how the whole chain 
we work in Livorno. In the top line on the left, you can see the information flow to the different system. The terminal, main control system, one machine to machine, and the port authorities database. In the middle, uh, we have the local private network, which will handle the communication between the system flow and the field services, cameras, tablets, smart glasses, sensors, which are connected to the network. The Quay operator through Terminal Lorenzini communicates the bulk cargo data on the ship to be unloaded or bulk cargo goods to be potentially loaded. The information passed to the main control system developed by Ericsson elaborates all the incoming information and through the 5G logistic chain will elaborate the optimal storage location, their house management, and deposit of bulk goods. Informed through tablets and smart glasses, the forklift diver about the optimal path to follow and the most efficient good allocation. The forklift live driver uh, will uh, visualize the requested operation as a pathway to follow or bug loops to move to rearrange the storage plates through augmented reality and virtual reality visualized on tablets and in the smart glasses. The WDR cameras will track the movement and positioning while the LIDAR cameras will detect size and provide precise measurement for optimizing all logistical location of goods. The 5G infrastructure is a non-standalone architecture, which means a combination of a 5G and a, and a 4G and a 5G antenna, working on the frequencies of TIM, the largest telecom operator in Italy. The 5G network will elaborate multiple data coming from multiple sources with required quality standards to afford operation in real time. The main control system elaborates all data, execute calculation, elaborate information from cameras, calculate information on position and movements, and transmit all the operation to the devices handled by port operators. So all the gathered information of the main control system will be passed to a machine-to-machine -machine platform, which will transmit data to the yard management system of the port authority. So the real-time port means handle and manage logistical operations in real time, saving manual calculation and optimizing storage cap capacity and time to operation. All the use cases that we have developed and close in detail with some demo will be presented by my colleague Teresa, to whom I pass the stage for the following slides. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Anna. Good morning to everyone. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, so uh, as Anna said, the use case that we are working on is a general cargo logistic uh, use case that has the aim to automate and digitalize the port operations uh, for uh, the general cargo logistics. Uh, that uh, today are uh, still uh, made manually. It uh, consists uh, in two phases. The first one uh, refers to the procedure for uh, good acceptance and uh, the transfer to the storage area. The second phase instead is uh, related to the loading operation, the selection of goods to load and the transfer to the crane. The main actors involved in these activities are the quay operators, the forklift drivers, the docks operators, the captain, and the main control system. That is the software developed by Ericsson that manages the sequence of the general cargo operations. Uh, when uh, a, a truck arrives, uh, the quay operator collects all the information on that goods and uh, using a dedicated app uh, running on a tablet uh, sends uh, uh, them to the main control system uh, using the mobile network. Once uh, the main control system uh, receives uh, the information about the incoming object, 
it creates a, a record uh, in the relational database and identify an optimal allocation in the storage area where to place the object according to uh, a set of rules. Then uh, the forklift drivers uh, will receive indications on where the object has to be placed and uh, using uh, virtual reality is guided to the storage area. The second phase instead, um, in the second phase, uh, the dock operators uh, using an app send uh, a request to the next of the next object to load to the main control system. Uh, the object can be identified in more than one way, depending if it follows the loading plan or not. Indeed, uh, when uh, um, uh, goods have to be uh, loaded uh, on the ship, there is a loading plan prepared by the captain, but uh, this plan can be changed uh, runtime if an object of different size or weight is needed, for example, to balance uh, the load uh, on the ship. So, uh, once the main control system receives the request, it uh, selects uh, the object uh, to transfer, uh, chooses a free forklift, uh, and uh, informs uh, its driver about the object uh, to be picked uh, and where to place it. The driver, uh, using the app, uh, will receive the data and will be guided uh, to the storage area where uh, the object is. Uh, to digitalize all these operations, uh, reduce infrastructure cost and optimize both the loading and unloading phase, emerging technologies in mobile communications and IoT has been involved. Uh, here we try to provide a synthesis of the main innovations for RTPort. First, we provide a computer-aided solution to automate all the operations related to the good acceptance phase. Uh, that is, uh, automate the identification and registration of the arriving pallets in the docking area. A solution for the acquisition of all the information related to the freight uh, have been developed uh, too. Uh, for instance, uh, since good size is not always available uh, in the way bill, a measurement uh, device based on uh, 3D LiDAR technology has, uh, has been developed uh, for uh, good size acquisition. Another important innovation is uh, the optimization of goods positioning in the docking area, thanks to a computer-assisted solution that uses operational research algorithm, uh, image recognition, and artificial intelligence technologies. Wide dynamic range cameras connected in 5G has been used for the stereoscopic vision of, uh, of objects to detect their position. Uh, moreover, Hertiport provides also an automated solution to support worker, uh, workers at the docks in finding the proper pallet to take in front of the crane for the loading. Uh, to do these uh, augmented reality applications uh, have been used uh, for improving efficiency in sparse wood handling uh, in the port area. Uh, all the operations uh, um, are all these operations are possible thanks to a smart control system with whom uh, the port operators uh, interact. Uh, using the IoT Android apps developed by Ericsson and the use of a relational database and a rule-based expert system to handle the support process. Also, virtual reality applications have been introduced for the optimal storing of freight in the yard and um, remote quality check. Uh, so, the, um, the key enabling technologies for that solution is certainly the 5G. Uh, thanks to 5G, it is possible to introduce uh, augmented reality applications for improving efficiency and uh, safety in goods handling. 
indeed this um, uh, indeed, uh, this, uh, this required to correlate real-time information uh, captured from sparse sensors uh, and uh, provide feedbacks uh, to operators uh, with a very low latency. Uh, moreover, through 5G it is possible to uh, enable uh, real-time uh, positioning of vehicles uh, and freights uh, using uh, cameras. Uh, these require uh, high bandwidth and low latency. So, all this solution uh, is tested in the living lab established in the port of Livorno. Uh, some tests have been already done uh, and other uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions have been uh, postponed, but uh, testing activities for the seaport logistic applications uh, are proceeding uh, using uh, virtual uh, reality. So regarding uh, the, the activities already uh, tested at Port of Livorno, we have uh, installed uh, the main control system of the logistic system on the server in the Ericsson shelter. The main control system was integrated and tested with the both LTE and the 5G local private network using the app that we have developed and that works as a human machine interface to handle all the operations. Uh, also, the relational database managing the terminal data was installed and uh, integrated and is operational at the port of Livorno. Um, the interwork among uh, the app, the main control system and the relational database was tested using the mobile uh, connectivity. And uh, all the steps required by the registration and loading phase uh, has been uh, verified. Here we report some videos uh, showing uh, the registration phase first and then the loading phase. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a note, uh, for uh, the COVID restriction, uh, we don't have the possibility to um, make uh, some videos at the port, uh, port of Livorno. So uh, these videos are made in our uh, lab in CISA. Okay. <clears throat> in this one, you can see the interaction between the main control system and its relational database and uh, uh, the application used for the registration of the freight. Using this app, it is possible to associate to the freight a unique identifier, reading the QR code using the camera of the tablet, and to collect all the information related to the goods, um, for instance, the destination, uh, the weight, uh, the size, uh, information on the ship. And this is uh, all the information needed to handle that goods. So when all the information are inserted, the registration form are sent to the main control system uh, using the, the submit button. And then the database is updated with an entry for the new object arrived. <clears throat> the, the second video instead is related to the loading phase. Um, in this case, using the app for the loading operation, it is possible to request a good to load customizing the request, so specifying some characteristics. Uh, given that, it is possible to select a good, a good from a list of available object that has that characteristic, and selecting also the forklift and confirming the request is sent to the forklift driver that take charge of the goods and then uh, the relational database is updated and the status of that object change from uh, waiting for transfer to in transfer. Uh, <clears throat> instead, uh, using virtual reality and in particular the Panda 3D tool, we uh, tested the high precision freight positioning and tracking system 
that is based on uh, real-time uh, uh, HDR cameras, image processing and analysis. Uh, for uh, this purpose, uh, we have modeled uh, a virtual storage area and uh, virtual cameras, uh, taking into account uh, um, the optics of the real camera for uh, uh, an optimal representation. Moreover, uh, all the software subsystem, so the main control system, the relational database, the positioning system have been integrated. Uh, virtual freights are moving in the area as in real condition to test vision-based positioning algorithm uh, and uh, the interaction with the apps, artificial intelligence-based control system and relational database. Using uh, Unity um, 3D instead, we tuned and tested operative research algorithm for freight optimized allocation and the quality check functionalities with the virtual exploration of the storage area. Uh, here uh, we have reported a video showing uh, uh, the virtual reality environment developed using Unity. Our colleague is uh, showing how it is possible uh, to do the virtual exploration of uh, the storage area. Um, freight have been modeled based on information on a real loading plan. And uh, how you can see, uh, we have the possibility to move around the virtual scene of the port using uh, the end control and uh, when the player selects a freight uh, with uh, the laser pointer um, the clipboard shows information on uh, that object uh, moreover a software interface between the main control system and the port authority control platform has been implemented. Uh, this interface is, is used by the Port Authority control platform to acquire data about the vehicles and goods from our system and to provide on demand the ID uh, of the vehicles in the seaport area to be used for a specific task. And finally, since uh, the terminal uh, required that the cameras could be movable, a calibration tool uh, um, has been developed to allow the calibration of cameras used for stereoscopic vision of objects. In the slide, uh, you can see uh, the dashboard of the calibration tool and uh, the servo controller uh, controlled uh, uh, QR code used for the calibration. Um, in this way, um, also if uh, the positioning of the camera uh, should be changed, for, uh, for example, for operational reason, uh, the system is able to do an automatic calibration of the cameras, uh, finding an affine transforms from uh, cameras to support area coordinate reference system. Uh, to conclude, uh, we have uh, reported here uh, the expected outcome of the project. The first one is the port automation, does to provide a complete digitalization of uh, port uh, operations thanks to disruptive technologies, including uh, IoT, data analytics, uh, next generation traffic management, and emerging 5G network. The second uh, is uh, to strengthen port competitiveness uh, by increasing safety and efficiency in good handling and introducing automation uh, in seaport operation. So collecting data uh, via yard vehicles and in planned sensors uh, like uh, cameras, it is possible a uh, real-time control of the port operations uh, and therefore an optimization of this uh, uh, with a consequent reduction of vessel operation completion time, uh, minimizing uh, waste of uh, money due to idle time of the ship in the seaport. 
and last but not the least uh, creating a more sustainable port environment uh, but um, Rossella Cardone will talk more about that uh, uh, later so uh, with the, with this I conclude my presentation thank you very much Teresa now I will launch a quick poll what do you think about this innovation? Is it already deployed in your port? Is it existing and is prepared to be deployed in your port? It is existing and not yet deployed in my port or not applicable to my port. So there is 2% of uh, the audience who did vote. I will ask some uh, the the attendees also to vote. The answers are coming in. I invite you to vote. I leave some more seconds. I will close the poll in five seconds. And I close the poll. So 16% say it is already deployed in my port. 26% say it is interesting and it is pre being prepared to be deployed in my port, but 58% say it is interested, interesting and not yet deployed in my port. So now we will go towards the, the optimization planning tool for container operations presented by the, um, Alexander Tardo. Alexander is a senior researcher and project manager at CNIT in Italy. He received his Master of Science degree in Telecommunications and Engineering in 2015 from Catania University. In 2015, he conducted industrial research related to ICT technologies and advanced applications for control, monitoring, and management of processes and systems for risk prevention at the University of Catania. In 2016, he has been involved in research and development activity related to interoperability platform for health cloud at Telecom Italia. From 2017 to 2018, he was part of the research group of CNIT as system platform analyst, working on several aspects related to digital platforms and currently used at the port of Livorno, such as data normalization, integration of new services and interoperability. From 2018 until now, he moved to his interest both to the implementation of disruptive technologies like 5G, and service-oriented architectures in ports. He is responsible for of the implementation of several innovation actions for the ports of Livorno, more specifically leading the technical activities related to intra-terminal operations. Alexander, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas, for introducing me. Uh, Mainly, this presentation is focused uh, on the aspects uh, related to the usage of uh, simulation tools uh, within uh, the support domains uh, in order to be able to find the potential improvements that should be achieved or fulfilled through the simulation. And uh, the reason why uh, we should be more interested in, in the usage of simulation tools uh, is uh, uh, is the fact that uh, potentially we could use uh, uh, cost-effective solutions in order to solve uh, potential problems that uh, otherwise uh, could require a lot of uh, economic investments in uh, developments uh, and uh, as well as in infrastructures. So uh, let me start. Let me start from. This consideration, uh, of course, uh, we are all aware about the CO2 emission uh, issue that is uh, actually uh, is affecting the, the, all the sectors worldwide. And uh, if you take a look at the uh, annual report from the uh, European Commission, we can see that the maritime transportation plays uh, uh, a very very relevant uh, role here because uh, uh, in general uh, the transport sector uh, is plays a, a very important role at least uh, as for us uh, uh, the overall percentage of uh, co2 emissions 
and uh, mainly this is why we needed to, to adopt the new solutions uh, and uh, we, we needed to make our port uh, uh, as much as sustainable as possible. That's why we, we, we can talk about uh, the uh, green economy concept uh, and the concept of sustainability in general within the support. And uh, for the instance, we could uh, study uh, how to apply new business models uh, uh, within the support, uh, how to make uh, the development uh, sustainable, and uh, any other uh, kind of optimization that we can perform. Regarding the port uh, of Livorno, of course, the support uh, is a very important, is the main node, uh, at least as far as uh, uh, the intermodal transportation is uh, concerned. So the support uh, could be seen uh, as the one of the main uh, uh, pollutant uh, sources, uh, of course, uh, making the exception for manufacturing and so on. And if we take uh, a look at the port of Livorno, uh, if we try to refer to the previous year, we can find that uh, something like 150,000 uh, uh, tons of CO2 have been produced. Only 37% of the uh, of these emissions are uh, mainly dealing with the interterminal operations. So uh, uh, it's something that is about the way the container terminal, single container terminal, manages and uh, handling uh, hand, handles its, its own cargo. But uh, um, in some, so, if we see uh, the, the support as the main uh, node for the intermodal transportation, we, uh, we can also say that uh, potentially the wall efficiency of the wall port uh, is strictly related to the efficiency of the single uh, terminal operator. So, uh, the step that we should perform here uh, is that we need to improve the operational efficiency within the container terminal daily operations. This uh, could potentially lead us uh, to less uh, emissions uh, and uh, mainly to the improved efficiency of the operations. But of course, uh, there are two distinct uh, approaches that you can follow in order to achieve this goal. You can uh, provide uh, investments, economic investments in infrastructure and this is, uh, for the instance, is the case of uh, RT port. But uh, of course, in some cases, uh, uh, investments are really necessary because you have to make your own ICT infrastructure capable to perform uh, some kind of operations. But in other cases, uh, this is not uh, possible. So we have to find uh, other solutions. And uh, this is why I'm talking about here about the simulation tools. Uh, a lot of you uh, will be probably familiar with the concept of uh, digital twinning uh, and uh, other simulation tools, but uh, you, you can take, of course, you can take a look at uh, some international supports, uh, such as the Montreal port in Canada or uh, some European ports like uh, the port of Rotterdam or Hamburg. Uh, all these ports uh, are uh, adopting uh, digital twinning in order to perform some kind of analysis that could help uh, the, the, the operators to find, to find out uh, potential improvements that should be done without additional costs. So, the port mode is a simulating tool and uh, it uh, stands for optimization planning tool for container terminal operations. Mainly, it has been developed uh, by the Technical Research Center of Finland with several, uh, uh, for several purposes. The, the first one, of course, uh, is to be able to, to optimize the machine movements within the container terminal uh, area. And uh, the second one is uh, to be able to assess the usage of the equipment on field equipment like uh, uh, yard vehicles uh, or uh, cranes uh, and so on. And the third point uh, has, uh, has to do with the uh, yard area layout. 
So potentially uh, we could uh, uh, assess what is going to happen if uh, uh, we are going to uh, change the, the physical layout of the terminal. What is going to happen to the way uh, the terminal is currently managing uh, the, the cargo on the yard? And uh, port mode as uh, uh, as the innovation from the Corealis project is going to be deployed and uh, at the moment uh, is under test uh, both within the Amina Kotka Living Lab and the Livorno Living Lab. Of course, uh, um, since the Amina Kotka is the main pilot site for this innovation. Uh, port mode has uh, the full set of, of its own functionalities and uh, let me take advantage of this webinar uh, in order to invite you to attend uh, one of the next uh, uh, webinar that will be related to the uh, remaining living labs of this project so that you can go in deep within this uh, this innovation and for the case of Livorno port uh, we are uh, testing uh, uh, just a limited set uh, of functionalities, but this is uh, how to say up to you and uh, up to your requirements uh, anyway. So mainly uh, the this simulation tool uh, is uh, is capable through the simulation to find out potential bottlenecks uh, in the way you manage your containerize the cargo within your uh, storage area and uh, to find out potential solutions and improvements that should be performed in order to improve the world efficiency of this process. So, uh, how to say, this is uh, the, of course, since port mode, uh, uh, port mode's aim is to, to be able to provide to assess how to say the container terminal operators in uh, identifying potential as i've already mentioned bottlenecks or potential improvements uh, of course the first step that should be followed is represented by the container terminal layout in order to define the container terminal layout uh, and then run the simulation through the port mode tool we have to define a lot of elements within the uh, container terminal layout. These elements, uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, of course, uh, are dealing with uh, uh, the roads, the, the roads that are uh, used by the yard vehicles in order to manage the cargo. So mainly we have to define the vertices of the roads. Then we have to define the the storage areas within the container terminal and uh, as you can see in this picture the storage areas are represented uh, are highlighted in green and uh, are uh, mainly identified by means of uh, specific levels uh, of course the road vertices are represented in red and then uh, we build up uh, the the path, the link between two vertices that will represent within the simulation our road. So uh, another thing that we need in order to be able to run the simulation is the historical data uh, related to the container movements within uh, uh, the container terminal area and within this uh, layout uh given a specific time slot of course you can extract from the terminal operating system historical data for one month one year or just three days it doesn't matter and uh, at this point uh, we, we have all elements uh, in order to be able to run the simulation uh, at, at the moment the this tool is not uh, able to interact uh, automatically with the terminal operating system in order to retrieve the data this is done uh, actually uh, manually uh, because the port mode after all is a standalone uh, software but in any case uh, uh, you are able to implement a lot of uh, apis a lot of uh, custom interfaces in order to be able to retrieve this uh, historical data uh, 
automatically from your system or from the terminal, uh, uh, terminal container ICT system. So uh, the, uh, this tool is capable to accept uh, as the input of these informations that are structured following a uh, .csv formatted file mainly. And uh, at this point, uh, we are able to run the simulation. So this is the simulated uh, scenario for the case of Livorno Living Lab. As you can see, what we have done here is uh, just to perform a, uh, how to say, uh, a simple uh, uh, change within the uh, container terminal layout by adding an additional vertex of the roads so that uh, mainly we, we have added uh, another uh, road, simulated road within the container terminal so that we can compare with the current state of the art, what is the main result of this, uh, ch of this change? In this picture on your left, you can see the original layout. The, this is the original layout of the container terminal that has been uh, used uh, as testbed. Each point represent, uh, represents the vertex of a specific road, and we have uh, used uh, here just three day three uh, day long uh, data set uh, as far as the containers movements is concerned and uh, with the reference to the original layout uh, we found out that uh, the total covered distance uh, regardless of the number of movements uh, per uh, container unit uh, is something like uh, 553 kilometers so at this point, we mainly applied the what if analysis. So what, what, what could happen if we try to change the layout of the terminal? Are we capable to, to find out some kind of improvement that sh should be done, that could be done in that sense? And uh, we find that the total cover distance uh, by means of uh, adding uh, uh, just a, a Another road within the uh, original layout, uh, the total covered distance uh, is something like 450 kilometers. So mainly by means of this uh, simulated analysis, we discovered that we potentially we are capable to reduce uh, the driving distance, the driving distance by the yard of vehicles in order to uh, uh, how to say, to reach a specific storage area within the container terminal. The main result, uh, of course, since we know both the fuel consumption cost, both the vehicle's uh, fuel consumption, what we can do here is, uh, uh, how to say, try to make a kind of uh, both a quantitative as well as qualitative analysis, analysis of the potential benefits that this simulation could bring. And what we find here is that by introducing only one point within, so only one point, only one vertex within the container terminal layout, so it's uh, just a not so relevant change if, uh, if, you, if, if you think about uh, the redesign of the, uh, of the redesigning process of the wall uh, terminal layout, uh, we have uh, found that uh, mainly we are capable to provide a potential reduce, redu uh, CO2 reduction, reduction, at least as far as uh, emissions is concerned. And we can also do this uh, uh, by providing, providing some numbers. Of course, keep into the consideration that, uh, as, I've, as I've already mentioned at the beginning, this is a simulation tool, so uh, you are free to just run your simulations within your uh, container terminal processes without uh, the need in, in uh, further investments uh, in infrastructure or uh, so, uh, stuff like this. And uh, in this way, you, you could assess, you could provide to the container terminal operator a general overview 
about what is happening currently within the container terminal area. Just answering potentially to questions like, am I doing well? Are there any kind of improvements that I can I could perform in order to uh, improve uh, my the wall efficiency and stuff like this? So uh, this is all from my side. Of course, it's a simple example of the potential of the simulating tools in this context, and. Uh, I just want to stress the fact again that you are welcome to the next sessions of uh, Living Lab webinars so that you could, uh, how to say, see further details about the simulation tool, about uh, further about the world potential of this solution. So now a quick poll. Is this innovation of port mode, of optimization of container uh, terminal operations are really deployed in your port and traced interesting and being prepared in uh, your port, interesting and not deployed in your port or not applicable in your port? I see that the votes are being casted. I leave some more seconds for the votes. Five seconds more. And I close the poll. So we see that for 10%, it is already deployed in your port. For 30%, it is interested, interesting and being prepared to be deployed in your port. 55% say it is interesting and not yet deployed in your port, and only 5% say it is not applicable. So let me introduce you to the next speaker. We have the Wiebe de Boer, the Senior Advisor of Ports and Coasts at the Department of Arbor Coastal and Offshore Engineering at Delta West, the Netherlands. Wiebe has about 10 years of professional experience in Arbor and Coastal Engineering. After his Master of Science degree, in civil engineering and management at the University of Twente in 2009. He worked one year as research on the same university. He is currently working as senior project manager and advisor at the Coast Offshore Engineering Forum of Delta an independent Dutch research institute. He has international experience of projects related to port infrastructure, sustainable port development, and nature-based solutions and coastal erosion mitigation. Furthermore, he had a part-time research affiliation at Delft University of Technology. He is research and development coordinator of Future Proof Coast Infrastructure, project leader at the Port of the Future Serious Game, and project developer at Smart Port on Innovation Projects in the Port of Rotterdam. In his work, Wiebe strives to apply new technologies and integrate knowledge from different disciplines to solve both today's and tomorrow's challenges including sustainability and climate change adaptation. Simulation is very important, especially when you talk about the large investments, and we will explain how it is being managed. So, we the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas, for the kind introduction. I hope you can all see my screen. Um, as Thomas already said, uh, we are going to, uh, tell, uh, I'm going to tell you something about the Port of the Future series game, which is a tool for stakeholder engagement. So it will be a bit less technical than the previous presentation, but it's, um, well, not less important, I would say, because uh, acceptance by stakeholders of uh, technology and innovation is important, and also the larger scale impacts of those technologies should be assessed. So let me first uh, um, um, tell you why we started development of this Sport of the Future series game. Um, the motivation was actually uh, that, uh, well, uh, you, there's a lot of port uh, developments uh, going on. Uh, we have seen already the ports in, uh, in Europe that are uh, part of this consortium. And there is more and more uh, attention for inclusive green growth. And that means that it's not only about the economic development of those ports, but also about the environmental and social aspects. So, uh, which they also refer to as the triple P approach. So it's about people, planet, and 
prosperity. And it also means that uh, the context in which port developments are taking place are more complex and involve uh, more stakeholders. And um, uh, this is also uh, because of the new challenges that we are facing at uh, the emerging technologies that are uh, primarily the, the focus of the Livorno Living Lab, uh, such as the 5G, uh, but also the energy transition that a lot of ports are, uh, are working on and uh, climate change adaptation. So um, why then this Port of the Future series game? Well, the, the Port of the Future series, Future series game is especially meant to, to raise awareness. And we do so by uh, simulating uh, real world events in uh, well, a digital simulation environment, which is depicted in this picture over here. Uh, and uh, we try to um, um, accommodate stakeholder involvement. So what stakeholders will do uh, in, this, uh, in this game session is uh, sit together and think about the port of the future. What will the port of the future look like? And what can we do? What type of measures can we take to make the port of the future ours, let's say. Another uh, uh, motivation for the game is education purposes. Uh, because these complex challenges require multidisciplinary thinking, so you need to think across the borders of your own expertise, but also multi-stakeholder um, uh, uh, perspectives. So, so uh, these problems are complex and need to be approached from different uh, perspe perspectives to come to a consensus to decide what the port of the future will look like. So that's why we developed the Port of the Future series game. So what is it? Um, well, uh, as I already said, uh, the game consists of a digital simulation environment, uh, which describes basically a fixture sport. And um, um, there are uh, the, the people that are playing the game are divided over different stakeholder groups. And uh, uh, preferably, those uh, stakeholders are not taking their own role, but they step into the shoes of another stakeholder to think from their perspective about the port of the future. So. A typical stakeholders could be the local government, uh, financial investors, sport authorities, terminal operators, NGOs, uh, and there are a couple of more included in this game. Then all these stakeholders uh, start to uh, um, um, think about what they want to do and they negotiate about measures first uh, within their group uh, from, a, from a certain stakeholder perspective. And then they have to select uh, different stake, uh, different measures, and those measures can contribute to, um, let's say, uh, their port of the future. And the game consists of a large range of measures. So this could be, for example, emerging technologies like 5G, but it could also be hinterland connection improvements, uh, port expansions, uh, energy uh, measures such as renewable energy sources, uh, but also, for example, measures in the port city. And all those measures uh, are then scored on the people, planet, and prosperity or profit indicators. And uh, then we look at KPIs such as uh, for people, we look at employment, uh, recreation, and safety. And then for planet uh, ecosystems, uh, CO2 emissions, for example, and uh, climate vulnerability. And then for uh, prosperity, we look at the, the port profits. Uh, the, the port city benefits and uh, port operational efficiency. So each stakeholder can then select uh, measures and uh, try to improve basically the scores, which are depicted here in the screen, uh, people, planet and prosperity of the game. However, they have to do that together. Huh? So it's not that only one party can decide what to do. They have to discuss, they have to negotiate. And here there's also a very important role for the facilitator of the game that needs to facilitate this debate and also uh, uh, help the stakeholders to come to a consensus, consensus to decide what to do. Then there are also scenarios and events included in the game. And those scenarios and events are meant to basically make the game more fit for the specific port context where it is played. So uh, as I already said in the beginning, uh, there are different challenges now for ports um, with well, uh, different uh, uh, also learning goals in the game, you could say. So you have climate change adaptation, for example, energy transition, and well, a number more, economic stagnation, uh, which is especially relevant now uh, with uh, the current crisis that we are facing, innovation uh, that is well, particularly important uh, and relevant for the port of Livorno, sustainable port city development. And we also included a neutral scenario, um, which means that you can basically uh, start from uh, a neutral case where there is not really 
uh, you're not working in a certain direction, you could say. Apart from those um, scenarios, uh, we have events. And those events are meant to basically trigger additional debate uh, and uh, to basically uh, make people think differently uh, well, about things, unexpected things that may happen. So, for example, uh, if we take the emerging technologies, uh, we want to uh, raise awareness of the capabilities of those emerging technologies, which have been pointed out by the previous speakers, but also uh, with the potential consequences, for example, for uh, the workforce. Uh, so if we are going to automate things, that may mean things for the present workforce. Uh, so they could worry uh, about uh, uh, their jobs. So, well, uh, what would you do then? And to make people think about that, this special news, these events can, can, can help to, to, to think in this direction. Another thing to think about is if you are going to optimize all these things and there will, will be a network breakdown, for example, um, how, could, uh, how could we then still work? What would be uh, our, let's say, backup option and things? So to trigger this type of thinking, uh, well, the game uh, uh, has these events and uh, proves to be quite useful. Well, now, actually, we wanted to play this game live uh, in, the, in the living lab, but, well, uh, given the, uh, the, the circumstances at the moment, that is unfortunately not possible. But I've made a short movie to have you give you a little bit of a flavor of what this game is about. Uh, here you see the start screen and then, well, you can select a scenario. Um, here you see a list of scenarios that you can uh, choose from. Uh, in this case, uh, I, uh, we have the climate change adaptation scenario selected, and that will affect the scores of people, planet, and prosperity, which means that planet is now in minus. So this already forces the stakeholders to think about, uh, well, measures that will improve the planet score. In this case, uh, we just randomly select two measures. Uh, it depends on the, the discussions of the stakeholders, what will be selected. In this case, it's uh, port expansions. And what the game then will do, it will show visually what, what, what will happen. In this case, there is a brownfield port development where old infrastructure is replaced by new infrastructure. And it will also show not only visually what happens, but also how this affects the people, planets, and prosperity scores. So whether it's positive, negative or uh, neutral well those scores are also then uh, changed here it will affect also the budget of the, the stakeholders and that could be uh, the, the start of the next round let's say where people can uh, take uh, other measures to uh, improve their scores uh, and to uh, uh, well basically do better in the in the next round so uh, in this case uh, it's uh, port equipment electrification and increasing the public green space well, and uh, similarly, you will see the, the visual feedback from the game. Normally, a game consists of about two or three rounds to give people also a little bit the opportunity to think about the long term and to use this time component also in the negotiations with stakeholders. Uh, so if you give away something in the first round, you may ask for something in the second round, for example. At the end of the game, you can compare or you can see what has happened. You can see the scores in the beginning and the scores at the end. In this case, uh, you saw that the people score was uh, basically up, but the planet was not so well. And then at the end, a very important part is that the facilitator um, has a discussion or a reflection on the game. What has happened? Why has it happened? Uh, what did the people uh, think uh, while selecting measures? And that could be the start of further stakeholder engagement in thinking about the port of the future. Some concluding remarks. Um, so the focus of this game is on raising awareness, uh, on exploration of, uh, of, of the port of the future. It's not a decision-making tool as in that it provides facts and figures because it's, uh, it's more uh, qualitative rather than quantitative. And that is also different from the previous simulation tools, for example, the one that Alexander showed. Um, but the feedback from past experience is that it is a very pleasant interactive way of learning about port developments and thinking about the port. And it really helps to better understand the different pillars of port sustainability, understand the different stakeholder viewpoints, and to start thinking differently about uh, port developments. If you want more information, uh, well, please visit our website, uh, the Coriolis website, uh, and we also have uh, a website at Altaris, uh, which shows the Port of the Future series game. And uh, you can always also send me an email if you have further questions about this. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Weeb, for this entertaining uh, presentation. For having played with this uh, serious game, it is of importance and give very deep insights also in the different scenarios that are uh, available for choices. And then you can look, play it around look, uh, with the different uh, ports. So let's do a quick poll. Is this innovation already deployed in your port? It is interesting and being prepared to be deployed in your port. Interesting, but not yet deployed in my port or not applicable in my port. I see that the, the votes are being casted. Wait a little bit more to get the votes. Still three seconds to go. And I close the poll. So, 0% says it is already deployed in, my, uh, in your port. 23% say it is interesting and being prepared to be deployed in my port. 69% say it is interesting and not yet deployed in my port. And 8% say it is not applicable to my port. And now let me introduce you to the last speaker, Rosella Cardon, Head of Sustainability and Corporate Responsibility for Market Area Europe and Latina America from Ericsson Telecommunication. She is driver of innovation sustainability projects in public-private partnership with clients, leading industrial players, institutions, and academia to demonstrate and advocate the value of 5G and IoT as enablers of an intelligent, sustainable, and fully connected world. Rosella holds a master's degree in mathematics and a master of science in probability and statistics. She has been working at Ericsson for 20 years, covering several responsibilities in research and development, customer operations management, strategy innovation, marketing and sustainability. Rosella, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks, Thomas, and I hope you can see my presentation. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, today, I will talk about uh, the, the impact of IG in the port of Livorno. And uh, uh, as my previous uh, colleagues and speakers, uh, they introduced, Ports are complex and busy environments, and the sustainability perspective, together with efficiency and productivity, is becoming more and more important. And of course, 5G networks and digital technologies, it's well known that this can bring, uh, uh, can boost uh, and bring a very positive contribution from sustainability perspective, people, environment, and economy perspective. The point here is how ports can realize the benefits for people, economy, and environment at the early step of digital transformation, and how it is possible to forecast in a reliable way uh, which will be the impact. It can be negative, it can be positive of the introduction of uh, innovative action to guide for decision-making the ports uh, in terms of investment and, uh, and of course, to move toward uh, a sustainable port of the future. Uh, these are the uh, questions, let me say, uh, that uh, Ericsson, together with the Port of Livorno and uh, the NIT, partnering together in Corealis uh, into the Livorno port, uh, we had in our mind, and together with also an external partner, Fondazione and Enrico Mattei, uh, we addressed this, uh, this uh, challenge, I would say. And uh, we decided to develop a model with the quantitative insight that I'm very pleasure to share today. Uh, and also, uh, right today, we have launched a report. It's a paper where we have described uh, with more details uh, all the outcomes coming from uh, according to this uh, presentation. Uh, the um, analysis and the, the quantitative um, analysis, I would say the quantitative analysis has been uh, implemented uh, uh, through the Corealis uh, real-time port use cases that has been presented before uh, from technical perspective. So, um, setting the scene, from a business modeling perspective, uh, we need to adapt the traditional business model to be for sure more cost effective from one side to create efficiency and competitiveness uh, for the territory, 
and also for the all uh, players across the value chain in the port, but also to be to create positive impacts from social environmental perspective. On the other side, today ports uh, they have of course KPIs target to trigger uh, the 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 performance and the risk, we need to combine those, uh, let me call it the traditional KPIs, traditional targets, with, uh, with the more enhanced framework to capture the sustainable development, the direction that the port will take through innovation actions and related investment. Uh, we decided um, to target the to use the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which was signed by most of all governments in the world already in 2015, and of course from all uh, European countries and governments, uh, including Italy. And this is about 17 sustainable development goals offering uh, targets and also a global guideline for sustainability to tend to move towards sustainability across different, very diversified sectors, including transport and mobility, health for people, uh, economy grow, and, and, and so on. Uh, and we decided to combine the port KPIs, which are, of course, up and running today with the quantitative actual data, with the SDGs to create a 3060 approach that we have used into Corealis from qualitative and quantitative perspective. So th that's why we developed this smart model. Uh, and uh, uh, 5G is the lever we used to see, OK, uh, we are introducing 5G, which will be the positive impact that 5G will create. And uh, we have measured that through, let me say, economical KPIs and sustainability KPIs. Uh, YFG, my, my colleagues have uh, widely introduced, uh, and of course, there are technical characteristics of the network, so YFG is so important to enable uh, uh, use cases, real-time use cases in particular, uh, as Teresa Pipe introduced uh, before, and of course, YFG can contribute to create efficiency, productivity, reduce environmental impacts. Uh, high level, it is estimated that the use of, of ICT technologies can lower I, uh, CO2 emission uh, by 15% across uh, many other sectors in the world, including mobility and transport. And of course, the use of IG in the, in the port uh, workplace can for sure increase uh, uh, condition for, for workers. So which methodology we, we, we have developed and used into Corealis? Uh, first of all, uh, we looked not only to specific Corealis uh, port processes, but all the port processes of Livorno. Uh, and we um, have identified the most relevant sustainable development goals uh, matching the Port of Livorno agenda as uh, uh, Silvia Ferrini introduced at the beginning. The second step has been to look at all the port processes and to map those processes versus the 5G technology. So we have run a qualitative analysis saying per each port process, where and how 5G can create a digital transformation and, and, and the benefits from economy and sustainability perspective. And the third one has been uh, to quantify those benefits. Uh, on the bottom line of this slide, of course, you see all the, uh, let me say, processes in the port and, of course, the, the, all the players that can be involved. Um, and here on the left side of this slide, you see the relevant port processes in Livorno. We have, I would say, uh, we went through and analyzed from 5G perspective how we can create, transform, uh, those port processes through 5G and digital te technologies to make Port of Livorno a port of the future. And then fitting the Livorno port focus area, automation, transport and logistics, environment and safety, cybersecurity, and to be a smart port for a smart city. Uh, the result of this analysis, here of course I bring the result, is that 5G can enable 
65 direct and indirect positive uh, benefits if uh, 5G is applied to those port processes. And you see how many per each uh, sector, each focus area. Uh, on, the, on the bottom of this slide, you see which are the key uh, SDGs we are contributing to. Uh, of course, we work, uh, uh, we, we can enhance uh, the profile of uh, job and skills of workers in the port if they will use uh, 5G and digital technologies. We can create a more decent, decent uh, profile of jobs as well as to create a growth in the port. Uh, for sure, using digital technologies in 5G, uh, the SDG 9, it's about uh, leveraging uh, the industry uh, with innovation and, and, uh, and the digital infrastructure. So uh, a connected digital port will become uh, a more connected port into the city, increasing, uh, I would say, improving a better life, uh, quality of life for, for people living in poor territory. Uh, SDG 12 is about responsible consumption and production. All commercial companies uh, uh, operating into the port uh, will, uh, will have the chance to use uh, enhanced infrastructure to make their business more responsible since, for example, lowering their CO2 emission uh, when using digital technologies. And uh, uh, SDG 13 and 14, it's exactly about uh, climate and environment. So lowering CO2 emission, <clears throat> sorry, CO2 emission and better uh, improving the uh, pollution condition in the sea. And the last one, it's about SDG 17. According to United Nations, it's very important to partner. And I think we, as a Corealis European project, and in Livorno with this specific initiative, developing a model to quantify the forecast benefits, this is really a, a great example on how we are partnering public and private partners, research partners, how we are putting together our each own know-how to create positive value for the next step. So these slides summarize in very, very short the quantitative benefits uh, through Corealis RT mode use cases from economic and environmental benefits. Um, so uh, we prospect that uh, uh, just optimizing, let me say, through 5G digital technology, the vessel birth in time, uh, there is a saving of 2.5 million euro per year. Uh, on top of this, there are further cuts uh, in operating and amortization costs. For example, uh, just for one container terminal, it's possible to, let me say, avoid to save one forklift out of 14. Uh, the second pillar in the center of this slide, you see, uh, through 5G telecommunication, it's, it's, it's possible to move to uh, remote control of grantee equate cranes, and this can increase productivity by 20-25% in this range. Also, you could see through the uh, use cases that uh, we can have a faster ship turnaround and, uh, and a faster freight release through port gates. Uh, since thanks to 5G and IT application, we can be more precise into uh, detection, avoiding manual uh, works and related uh, mistakes. And the last but not least, I would say, from environmental perspective, we have quantified that, that if we use 5G and related on top AI uh, based control and uh, augmented reality and virtual reality solution, we can say for one container, terminal or for one operation terminal, 8.2% of CO2. This is very important since, for example, in Porto Livorno, there are two container operation terminals. So you understand if we just scale 5G and digital application uh, to the other container operation terminal, uh, these, these numbers scale as well. Uh, on the bottom of this slide, you can find uh, a link to the report that uh, I am really pleasured to share today, since the report has been published today for the first time, developed together with the Port of Livorno, CNIT, and FEM. So really thanks to my, I would say, colleagues into this uh, uh, very relevant, important work. And uh, uh, as a conclusion, 
uh, I would say uh, that for sure piloting technology in real port environment is very important since uh, you can touch the base, understand how in concrete the port can transform um, the port processes. However, on top of that, technology assessment is uh, at the same level important. It's uh, a tool for decision making and uh, for public bodies uh, and the authorities. It's very important to understand which are the prospective benefits uh, when you are going to introduce uh, innovation actions. And of course, through this experience in Coriolis, in Livorno, based on these quantified benefits, we can, uh, I would say, acknowledge that 5G is a critical infrastructure enabling innovation in the port, enabling economy growth along the value chain into the port and the, in the territory, and of course, enabling sustainability. So with this, uh, I want to thank you for, um, for your attention. And uh, uh, I, I would like to invite you to look at this report and also to share with your uh, audience um, to inspire with this best practice. Thank you. Thank you, Rosella, uh, for this interesting work. Uh, and especially to the UN uh, Sustainable Development uh, Goals are of importance for all op uh, port operators and port authorities. Uh, so if you have still any question, don't hesitate. There is no uh, yet um, there is no yet any further question. There was one question about the detailed economic aspects of 5G in port operations, but this is being researched for the moment by Ericsson, so there is no yet a direct answer to it. But just the recommendation, follow the project. There is still some phases to be done, as a, and especially when the evaluation phase is being started. So there will be some more information about this economic aspect of the 5G deployment. So I invite you to post your questions. There are no current questions anymore. We I know that the uh, why 5G in port operations has been already answered. Uh, extensively by the Crossella and also the two uh, colleagues, Anna and uh, Teresa. Don't hesitate. If there are no more questions, I will just. Um, no answer coming. No hands raised. So I will just invite you. Here is just the Academy uh, by Ertico partnership. It is the, the, this webinar has been co-hosted by Ertico and it will be also found back look, on the Ertico Academy. And if you have still some questions about look, the project, don't hesitate to follow us on the project website, on Twitter, YouTube, also LinkedIn, or post a, a question at the email address that is being shown now at info at list dot .au. And if there are no more questions for the moment, thank you very much for your attendance and keep, uh, uh, keep uh, follow us just to be informed about the next webinars. Thank you all and bye-bye. Have a good day.